G'day, it's Nathan from Ozaka here. You might know me from my website, Ozaka, and uh, what I'm going to demonstrate today is a, a method of doing multiple levels in one file. Uh, if you go to the website, I have actually blogged on this a few times, if you go to the website and to the link on the left, multi-levels, it will come up with uh, all my different blogs that I've mentioned, uh, how I've done what I've done, and explain it in a bit more detail, but hopefully uh, the video will make things nice and clear. I've got a demonstration file that I've put together to share with people. There's a, uh, several people who have, have taken on board and set it up in their own system and it seems to be quite successful. Though there are small issues uh, and we've worked through those and uh, hopefully I'll blog on uh, some of the little things that have popped up with uh, other users taking it on board. So what is it? Well essentially as you can see I've got uh, both levels of this two-story house in the same file. Uh, I extensively use layers and some people are afraid of layers but uh, they're actually very powerful. You can see I haven't got very many um, but you can see I've got level one. I've got a, a, a spanning construct type level, uh, a layer, which is the, the staircase, which obviously travels up to level two. I've got level two layers. I've got an, uh, a 3D layer, which is uh, gutters and fascias and stuff that shows up on elevations and also that I use in rendering. Uh, one of the reasons why I did what I did is because I extensively render uh, files and uh, to actually do that using Project Navigator for small residential projects, uh, there, there's a lot of things that happen that just take too long and are workarounds and annoying. Uh, one of those items is where you've got items that go from your first floor to your second floor uh, and, ha and how to deal with that. Some people put their roof constructs in, uh, a, separate, uh, yeah, in a separate construct, which means that when you're trying to get your walls to project up to the roof, the roof's not there you have to drag and drop the roof into that level, uh, into that uh, construct to then be able to uh, move your walls, uh, project your walls up to that roof. Then you've got to delete the roof because you obviously don't want it in that file. Uh, you've now got a layer that you didn't want, et cetera, et cetera. And you just end up with so many layers and bits and pieces and workarounds. This kind of thing where you've got a uh, window that goes from in a ground floor, that's pretty common. And if this wall is part of your second construct and is it, you know you have to add a an opening object or a, or a mass object or something and it just it just becomes all too messy when it's all in the one file that becomes quite easy because everything's there and uh, available. The other reason is uh, if you've read um, uh, Odin uh, Odin's article on rendering with Xrefs in uh, AutoCAD architecture, there is problems where uh, how materials are transferred between one XREF and another. Basically, if you collect a series of XREFs into one file to render, your materials will exist in that one file. What happens to your materials in these other files will no longer matter unless you delete the, rent the material here and then update it here. And, uh, you know, uh, I should direct you to that, uh, to that link to that article. Uh, I'll do that in another video. But uh, if you do everything in one file, if I update the material that's used for the ground floor, it's automatically updated for the second floor. And there's some great things. You should be using your buy material box ticked, uh, not specifying your material settings for rendering, but also for display in your, in your uh, buy, buy component. It's just a bad way to do it. You get so much saving by doing it by material. Once I got that, wow, uh, I'll show you that in another video because it's really important. But essentially, because I rendered in one file, uh, it's really important to, uh, to have be able to immediately access and change uh, materials on the fly. If I change it for ground floor, it's immediately changed wherever that material is used. Now, the, the demo file that I'll send out to you if you request it, uh, I've put the commands on layer zero. Uh, we've gone through the levels. If I just, how does it work? If I issue L1, you can see that everything else turns off except for level one. Uh, all my text, dimensions, and everything is all there together for me to work on. Uh, I have done a three-story in which I've chucked the dimensions and text and any annotations I've chucked it in paper space down here. Now, you might not have seen these for ages because AutoCAD turns them off, but if you're wanting to do small projects and you're wanting an efficient way to do it, this is an excellent way. And I'll show you some other tips about doing that in another video.
Um, let's go to some other commands. If I hit L2, that sets the second floor on. And you can see that the second floor turns off, everything else turns, uh, turns on, everything else turns off. You can see I've got the stair, which has of course got a display in the second floor. Now that's on a spanning construct. And I've also got some walls, actually, that I have actually chucked on the stair layer. I could just as easily stick them on a one plus wall layer if I wanted to. But hey, residential, uh, it's fairly easy to be adaptable. It's not like a big, huge project shared with an office of 100 drafters. Um, I've got some other layer. Oh, now what I'll do, I'll demonstrate what actually happened there. Just quickly, I won't go into this in detail, but I load my my own level list created program and that does a whole pile of little tricks and treats now what does it do when i hit l2 you can see it stays on layer one when i hit l2 and i draw a wall you'll see that the wall is drawn up at level two now what's happening with that list when i issue the l1 command is that it changes the elevation to two to the elevation that I've set for the second floor level. It changes the layer key override to two so that even though my layer key style says one wall, it changes it so that it's going to go on two wall because it sets up a, a layer override. Just undo that. Uh, and this holds my cut plane so it actually sets the cut plane up at second level. That's very easy to create, very easy to destroy, delete and recreate if, if it's mucked up or whatever, but there's barely anything to do to, to create that, so don't panic about that. Um, <coughs> I've got some other commands there um, that we can go into in other detail. I've actually programmed into the Lisp some very quick shortcuts for uh, dealing with la layers. So layer previous. Um, uh, turning selected layers on and off, freeze layer, layer thaw, all that sort of stuff. These are very quick. They're all in the same little area, uh, except the current <laughs> my current layer. So if I want to actually uh, make that the current layer to work on, uh, I can un do that. Yeah, um, and I've got some other commands like layer 1E, e, layer 1 electrical, and I se select uh, rever uh, reflected layer. You can see the text is gone, the dimensions are gone. The wall is shown now by the reflected view. Uh, all my windows and doors are showing, ceiling are showing. There's a, there's a staircase that's a little bit dodgy, that staircase, isn't it? it? Needs some adjustments there. But everything else is showing up, ready for electrical work. Uh, and I've done this actually for three levels, a three level house. That was uh, one of the ones that I was showing you there. Uh, garage and two levels and it was quite successful although to make model space a bit tidier because you see everything shows up in model space I did actually do my dimensions and text in paper space now from there each of my levels is then created in a sheet and I'll show you some other tricks of, of making this a lot more uh, quicker to produce than otherwise. Now I do use XREFs. Uh, all my elevations and that are created in XREF. You can create them in the same drawing if you wanted to. There are advantages to doing it in a separate sheet though. Uh, I do keep my, keep my survey as a separate lev uh, XREF and there's my survey there. That makes it easier when I'm designing and modeling I don't have to deal with that. This obviously, this stuff here is not shown in a normal working model. They they are just my instructions, and so what you'll have is your just your your model. Um, I have other commands because I use a layering method. Better be quick here. I'm going to run out of time. But say for example, layer site or layer one s, which is my level one together with my site details. So you can see uh, my paving and everything else there together with it. Anyway, that's just an intro into the system. If you want to have a look, come back, ask for a copy. Uh, I'm happy to send it to you so you can try it out for yourself. Anyway, from Ozaka, cheers, mate.